Thank you for joining me for this fourth talk in the series. The title of this talk is, If We Do Not Respond to God, What a Waste Our Life Shall Be. Parables help make clear what cannot be seen by an eye that looks but does not see. For the non-believer, life is what it is. They are born, they go to school, they go to school for many years. After school, they go to college or university. They enter the workforce and they, they belong to a company. They do a particular job, then they leave a particular job. They start a new job for a period of time and then they cease this new job. And then eventually they find a job that they have been looking for their whole lives and they stay with this job and basically they acquire the many things that life has on offer. They purchase a beautiful new car, they purchase somewhere to live, they fall in love, they get married, they have children, they don't have children. Basically, for the non-believer, life is what it is. The things that present itself to the non-believer, that is the totality of what life is. The things are life, and when the things cease to be, life is no more. For everyone, life is a bit like a car park. When we're looking for a car space in a car park, for both the believer and the non-believer, Sometimes we go around and around and around looking for that car space. For both the believer and the non-believer, when we find that car space, we jump into that car space and we park our car. Now the difference of this parking lot, as I said, the parking lot can represent both the believer and the non-believer, the Christian and the non-Christian. Well, the difference between the two is that for us Christians, we don't just believe that life is about parking our car, but we also believe that when we let go of the car, when we let go of this body that has been with us for all these years, we shall move on to something um, greater, something more exciting. We shall move on to a live show, for example, the um, performance of Miss Saigon, the performance of Phantom of the Opera, the performance of Jesus Christ Superstar. Now, they should really remake that, that performance, that live show. Yes, for the non-believer, um, the parking lot in this analogy of life is all that life is. For the Christian, on the other hand, um, we gain purpose in the car park, in the parking lot, because we believe that when we park our cars, there is something um, beyond the car park, and that is the live performance, our, our eternity with Christ. The, our eternity with Christ provides a purpose behind the car park. For the non-believer, there is no purpose behind the car park. The frustration of finding somewhere to park your car in itself is life. Um, this is the very um, purpose of life. Um, life has no purpose. We go around and we go around, or should I say, they go around and they go around and they go around and they go around. And this going around and around, like a chicken pecking in the dirt, scratching, looking for food, this going around and around and around is life itself. And when they finally are able to park their car, they exit the building. Yes. Sometimes, as Christians, we may feel that our own faith is a burden. And we sometimes feel this way because we are gearing ourselves towards this eternity with Christ and our lives um, in the analogy of the car park, our lives are very much um, influenced towards this, um, this gearing. So our Christianity can become a burden because the decisions that we make in life are geared towards an eternity with Christ. 
as in the title of this talk, parables help make help make things clear by an eye that looks but does not see. Jesus Christ, the greatest storyteller of our time, used parables. And we can read about these parables that Jesus Christ used in the New Testament, in the Gospels. Three that come to mind are the Good Samaritan, the lost sheep, the prodigal son. These three parables immediately come to my mind. The, the reason why parables are so great and are a great um, medium for storytellers and teachers is, is because people generally have preconceived ideas about everything. Um, people in general, the non-believer and the Christian, basically people in general, they have a um, knowledge or a, or, or a belief um, in regards to a particular topic and they will hold this knowledge or belief, this preconceived idea within them and that will um, basically, um, a lot, um, when someone is trying to inform them about something, they will put up these um, barriers because they already know the answer, allegedly, towards certain questions. And they're not willing to accept um, new ideas and so forth. So the idea of using parables when trying to um, teach is a great um, medium because um, people generally love stories. People love listening to stories and people um, lower lower their um, guards, their defences, so to speak, when they listen to a story because they don't know the ending of the story. In the example of the Good Samaritan, the um, Jewish people of the time who Jesus Christ was teaching, um, basically the Levite and the priest, they left the poor chap on the side of the road and it was the Samaritan who actually helped this poor chap who was robbed. It was actually the Samaritan who helped him. And basically Samaritans were um, less, I suppose, holy and religious people than the priests and the Levites. In the story of the lost sheep, Jesus Christ in this parable is the good shepherd. And to think that Jesus Christ will go after one lost sheep and leave the entire flock um, demonstrates his great infinite love for each and every one of us during the times when we are lost, when we are like lost sheep. In the story of the parable of the prodigal son, we think of this good father who had two sons, a good son and a son that was not so good, the prodigal son. And we think about how the good father was so happy just to see his son return after many, many years and how this good father went out and hugged his son who returned after squandering everything that this good father gave to him. He was so happy to see this good son return. Parables are very, very helpful. Very, very helpful when we try to teach people our own faith, our own faith, our own beliefs about this great teacher, Jesus Christ, 